my good buddy John Korea. John, are you there? I'm here. Welcome. It's uh, I'm grateful to be here. Have you ever had uh, Ace of Spades as your intro music? <laughs> I think that's the first time I've had Ace of Spades on the intro, and I might keep it. You should definitely keep it. <laughs> yeah, you, you, can thank, keep it. <laughs> you can thank Brendan for that. He's our <laughs> musical wizard in the box. So John is I feel like from, a relief pitcher coming in. You know what I mean? There you go. That's your your <laughs> walk up your, your uh, yeah. So uh, John is from Active Self Protection ASP, which uh, your logo is a snake, which is I'm assuming the snake is an asp. Is that right? Correct. See, yeah, I, yeah, that's right. I was today many years old when I figured that out. I just figured that out. I, I, I've known you for a few years. I've been following you for a few years. I just figured that out today, John. Oh, this is John's. Uh, well, look at you, man. You're making it. I know. <laughs> John's your great chance to throw in that tagline, too, that I always hear about. Yeah, we talk about cover your ass. There we go. <laughs> so active, know, and it actually has a reason because at, the asp is the Egyptian cobra, which is a small snake that's not aggressive to people, but will defend itself and is quite deadly if threatened. See, I didn't know any of that, and that's a perfect description of the service you provide, John. You ha- he, if you've probably seen him on YouTube, if you're listening, you've probably seen him on YouTube. Uh, what he does is he's an instructor out of Arizona, and he started reviewing um, uh, defensive gun use videos, so like security videos, that sort of thing, when someone has is defending themselves with a gun, and he breaks it down, shows it to you exactly what happened, and then breaks it down step by step, and basically walks you through things that were done well, things that were could have been done better, mistakes that were made, that sort of thing. And I can't, I don't know, I, I've lost count. I th- you, are you up to 15,000 videos? You've reviewed? Well, we've we've analyzed about 25,000 defensive encounters, both armed and unarmed. We have about uh, 1,900 on our main channel right now that we've narrated from lessons learned. 25,000 defensive gun use videos. That That's just, you know, when people, especially when the, the folks that are trying to restrict our rights and take our guns away, when they talk about, you know, the fact that, uh, or when they their opinion is that uh, being, you know, defending yourself with a firearm is a myth. It's a fantasy. Well, here's 25,000 videos. This is just what was caught on video that, that John has, and, and what John has analyzed. I mean, think of how much, how, how often this happens and how common it really is. Is that, is that something that occurred to you when you started down this path you know it really wasn't what was first in my mind but of course you know we look at the statistics and they say that there are somewhere over two or three hundred thousand defensive gun uses every year in america and the more we see one of the the things that i do the main videos for every day is to remind people that defensive firearm uses are normal defensive firearms carry is normal and good and helpful to our society I think that's a great message. Well, I, you know, you've come out a couple times and taught a seminar that I really like. Um, it's your 21 lessons learned after watching all these uh, videos and analyzing them. Uh, you've you boiled it down to 21 lessons that, that people can walk away with. And, John, I'll be honest. I, I think that uh, the gun world tends to make mountains out of molehills. And there are very few times, I, and I hear it all, I, you know, everybody's got a piece of advice for me. Um, and there are very few times I can think of that somebody has actually changed uh, changed my opinion or, or changed my behavior on something. And one thing that really hit home from your 21 lessons is that you pointed out that out of all these thousands of times people that have used a firearm to defend themselves, I think at the time you said only three times you've seen somebody actually change a magazine or use an extra magazine, right? Yeah, it's true. Uh, you know, when we talk about in, in officer-involved gunfights, it's very different because officers have to chase bad guys down and take them into custody. But private citizens, to this day, I have never seen a magazine change affect a defensive gunfight for a private citizen. So I'm not saying it's wrong to carry a spare mag, but it, it just doesn't really affect real fights that I've ever seen. So, but but the, it's, there's one step. You took it one step further, though, and it, you never discouraged people from carrying an extra magazine. But the one point that really seriously has changed my behavior, and I appreciate what you've done, is you said, "Look, if you're carrying an extra magazine, if you have room for an extra magazine, and you're not carrying a tourniquet, you're wrong." 
Either get rid of the extra magazine and replace it with a tourniquet or start carrying a tourniquet too. Yeah, I'd go even farther than that today because, um, in, in fact, for instance, today's very video on the main channel was somebody shot in the chest during a defensive gunfight. So a full trauma medical kit is very important to me. And I've actually used my trauma medical kit three times, at least one of which was pretty instrumental in helping somebody survive. Um, none of those were gunfight related, but having trauma medical and the skills, of course, of course, the skills to use it is very important in our world. So I'm not saying not carry a spare, but if you're carrying a spare and you don't carry a less lethal on you, like say an OC spray or something like that. In fact, one of my staff members today, in, the, in fact, this very day, one of my employees used her OC spray to protect her and her children from a, a very aggressive person. So if you're not carrying a less lethal, you're not carrying some trauma medical, but you are carrying a spare, I'd encourage you to think about that and, and, and maybe change some things up. And, you know, John, this is Joe. And, uh, you know, I just wanted, I've said this to you before uh, when we've talked, but I mean, you provide one of the, one of the best services to our community uh, through the things that you create. Um, your videos are great. I watch them all the time and they've influenced my behavior. Um, I do carry the spray with me now as a less lethal uh, thing. And, um, you know, one of the things we're doing out here, we've recently got our concealed carry rights back and it's just booming out here. We're doing like eight different seminars each month, uh, explaining to people how to get them. And I always encourage people to do it correctly, get the training, get the things you need. And I always point out your videos and encourage people to watch those every day. And in fact, um, if you're still listening a little bit later today, we're going to talk about um, carrying around in the chamber, which was the article I wrote this week. And I linked to one of your recent videos there because um, it shows a woman who um, was carrying with one not in the chamber and had to fumble racking it and just barely got it out in time to use it. And uh, it's very, very educational stuff. So you do just a great job and a great service for us out here. Well, I really appreciate that. And of course, I'm so grateful for the work that you guys are doing. You know, as somebody who I moved to Arizona from San Diego County, and when I lived there at the end of the, you know, very beginning of the 21st century, I mean, carry was just unheard yeah. of. So the work that you guys are doing is so important. And I'm so grateful. And we know that good people carrying is a good thing for them and their families. So I'm super grateful to help in any way, you know, and, and Mike, you and I have talked about this. I wear my San Diego County gun owner shirt <laughs> yeah, all do. the time on camera because I appreciate the work you do. Well, that's awesome. So active self-protection, what, what can, people need to do what? We need to go to your website. We need to like you or subscribe on, on YouTube, right? Or, or tell, us, tell us what you want what you want people to see and tell us what you want people to get out of what you're providing. Well, so what we do is every day people send me real life surveillance videos from armed robberies, carjackings, mugging, stabbings, home invasions. I do after action reports on them. It comes from my time in the military. And so please join us. Go to our main YouTube channel, Active Self Protection. I have a second channel, Active Self Protection Extra. Subscribe to us there and come and be a part of what we're doing. We'd love to have you and help you. That's awesome. I, I really do. It's all I can do, John. Um, there is probably, I don't think a week goes by that I have to stop myself from sending you a video and going, John, what about this one? Tell me about this one. Like I'm a, like I'm a kid. Cause I just, I just, I think they're so interesting. You're also, you're my wife's favorite too. Like all these guys, these, uh, you know, on YouTube and instructors and, you know, the provide different, uh, uh, you know, services. Uh, my, my wife, Laura watches your stuff and loves it. And I, I, the reason I say that is my wife's not, uh, you know, she's into guns. She's got her CCW. She's got her gun. She's a good shot, but she's not, you know, immersed in the world, you know, like or, or in the community like the rest of us are. Um, and and it, it appeals to her very, very much because it's so practical and it's so easy to watch. And the, the lessons are so uh, uh, useful. Um, so that's somebody that's kind of outside of the bubble who, who says, yeah, this is good. This is interesting and good information. I really appreciate that. I think. You know, one of my big goals is to help people who are just trying to see, is this something that's important? Should I be a self-defender? And to show them the realities. You know, I started active self-protection just to see what is the reality of self-defense? And am I training the right things? I'm a martial artist. I've got 14 years in uh, empty-handed self-defense and a firearms carrier. 
And so, you know, uh, people like your wife who they're like, well, I'm not a big training junkie. Most of us aren't, but I want to know what I really need to be prepared for. That's really what my goal is. So I'm super grateful to help. And, and man, you're just really encouraging me. Thank you. That's awesome. And you're a Masada Yub Group MAG40 graduate, right? I am, in fact, an, a MAG40 graduate. Uh, I even have a $5 bill that Moss has signed because I beat him on his qual the, the time that I was in there. Oh. Which I wasn't expecting to, but I did. And um, I'm actually hosting Masad in Phoenix in July for his deadly force instructor class. So, um, you know, for any instructor who wants to learn Moss's approach to teaching deadly force and uh, the judicious use of deadly force, we'd love to have you at our class in July. Is that an indoor range? I mean, that's Phoenix it, in July. It's not a live fire class. It's all uh, classroom classes. Oh, Tim cool. and Marty Hayes. It's a Monday through Friday class here in Phoenix. And I would love to have anybody come and train us because we need more students. <laughs> there you go, buddy. All right, what's your website? It's ActiveSelfProtection.com. You can find us on YouTube at YouTube slash Active Self Protection or Active Self Protection Extra. We have a Facebook page and an Instagram and uh, would love to help people any way we can. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. Appreciate you calling in. Look forward to talking to you down the road. Thanks, John. Thank, thanks so much. Thank All you, right, folks. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to it. Without someone doing something about it, it's not going to get any better.